more and more drugs to get inspiration. And eventually, he, he took some of the strong stuff. I forget the name of it right now, but it got to a point where it so ravaged his brain and his mind that even though he used to write beautiful poetry, he now sits down before his, 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 with a pen and a pad for hours and can't come up with one thing because he's gorged himself in the pleasure of, of this drug that he has, it has wrecked the mind that God has placed within him. Are you hearing me this morning? It is, it is so twisted and turned his mind that he sat down for hours and could not think of one sentence after writing books in his lifetime, many books of poetry in his lifetime, he could not come up with one sentence. And he wept over that piece of paper. Because he's allowed a drug to rob him of something so powerful as the words of poetry that could, have, that, that could inspire people to move and do things. These things, we got to sell them out. We got to sell them out. Just like the rich young ruler as he came to Christ. And Jesus is like, look, <laughs> I want you to follow me. I want you to come with me. But you know what? There's some things in your life that I need you to sell. I need you to get rid of it. See, the kingdom of God is like this. It's, it's like a man who found a treasure out in the midst of a field. And he goes and he sells his entire possession so that he can buy this one field. Because he has the kingdom of God. I'm still amazed at the, at the woman with the, with the widow's might. I'm still amazed at that woman. I still read over those couple verses in Luke. I think it's chapter 6 or 16, one of those. And I'm still amazed that she would go as far as to give her last, her last nickel just to worship God and just to be closer to him. I'm still, I'm still amazed that she would give her last breath. She would have nothing else to eat in the house. Nothing else to, to buy some food with. And she would give that last breath to, in worship to God. I'm still amazed and I'm shocked. And I feel jolted in my own spirit. That she would give. And Jesus is like, I've, I've not seen such crazy faith in all of Israel. She has given far more than all those who have given out of their wealth. She sold everything. You know what? And the disciples said, what about us who have given everything for the kingdom? A lot of people wanted to follow God. A lot of people wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, fox have holes. The son of man has nowhere to rest his head. Jesus had a lot of disciples. He ended up with 12 He wasn't chasing a crowd. And that's what God was doing with Gideon right here. 10,000 to fight a battle, and he's like, it's too much. These people don't have my heart. They don't have my character within them. I can't do nothing with this. See, while we call people according to our weakness to surround us, in business world, and it's a smart business idea. We call people according to our weakness. God calls people according to his character. Why do you think David was king? He was a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's still a summon going on, right? God is summoning us still because there is a battle for the 300 to do. 
And even in the midst of this small crowd, even in the midst of this small church, we can... We in this ministry of all ministries can attest to what a small set of believers can do. Amen. Ministry in, in, in Liberia, ministry in Philippines, ministry in Jamaica, and it's, and it's blowing up in all areas. And, and we are still at the home base, just a, ma a matter of 300. God can work something amazing through 300. God can change an entire, entire face of history through 300. So what did Gideon do? Gideon had his army. So, and this is how, <laughs> this is so interesting. Because God, God allowed Gideon to listen in on the enemy. And this is how God, <laughs> this is how God overthrows the enemy and fights on our behalf. He allows someone in the command, in the command to have a dream about like rice cakes or, or something of that matter, like rolling down a hill, knocking over a house. And I don't know how they extrapolate from all of that, that this is Gideon's army coming after them. I don't know how they extrapolate, but God knows exactly where they're coming from and what it is exactly that would instill the fear within them that would send them into confusion. So then God allowed just, just one of his scouts to go and hear this and then, or Gideon heard this and then shortly he came back and he woke everybody up. He was excited. It's like, wake up. God has delivered. God has delivered. Because I have a set of people here who are after his character. Might not be perfect. Might have a, a, a wrinkled past. Might have some fear still caught up in a little corner. But they are willing to walk forth in faith irrespective of whatever the devil has said about them. Whatever their mama said about them. Whatever they call themselves. They are willing to walk in the character of God. They are willing to walk in God's presence. See the amazing and interesting thing is. When you're walking, you know, and I heard someone say this, that a dove, it's so interesting that the Bible would, would characterize or, would, or, or manifest the Holy Spirit as a dove. Because doves are very, like, like finicky birds. They, at, the, at, at like a moment's jolt, they fly away. So you can imagine if you have a dove on, on the side of your shoulder, if you have to walk with that dove, you have to walk gingerly in order to make sure that that dove doesn't fly. If you don't want that dove to fly away, you have to kind of walk slowly. And then lo and behold, you got to walk down these stairs. It's going to be a tough thing sometimes to walk down these stairs without having that dove fly away. And then so with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is so gentle. The Holy Spirit is so gentle that we, we have, you walk in a way that invites him, that his presence is there. You won't, you're not going to say things, just anything that will offend the Holy Spirit. You're not going to say anything that will, that will run him away because he's the power in your life. You're not going to say anything that will, that will drive him away, that will offend it, his, his sensitive nature. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is summoning us to walk in a way that we walk in his spirit. Just, just walking in his spirit. Not just, just shoving our face in the water, but walking gingerly according to his spirit. So then when the fight comes, that we can raise trumpets, we can raise our voices... And set fire to the enemy. Amen. And he sends the enemy into confusion. And victory is certain. Victory. Victory. Anybody hear me? Victory is certain. There's no losing a battle with God. There's absolutely no losing a battle with God. You know, and I've decided in myself to do it, to do it God's way. 
And yeah, I, you know, there's some still a lot of aspects that, that, you know, the Lord is working on me with, but I've decided to do it God's way. And, you know, of course, everybody knows that I've taken up a new position and so on, and I'm, I'm a big boss now. And, um, but being a big boss as myself, you know, you have big boss responsibilities. Amen. And being a big boss and having big boss responsibilities, you got big boss problems too. Amen. You got big boss problems. Yeah, I got big boss problems. You know, and um, I, I wasn't going to tell this story, but I, I, I can't seem to shake it and I have to, I have to tell it. So I'll probably slash the tapes. I won't even tape this, but um, you know, there was one situ there there was one situation where um, you know I, from the moment I stepped into this workplace, I've been trying to sort of buy people's affection, you know, trying to be light, you know, trying to, you know, follow some 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 things of leadership, some principles of leadership. And um, you know, because for instance, John Maxwell, you know, I started listening to him uh, when I took up this job because I wanted to be a solid leader in the, in the place. And, and um, of course, one of the first principles that John, John Maxwell highlights, he's like, look, when you step into a workplace, you've got to make sure you know.